Okay, let's go back to this slide one more time. Uh, the method of characteristics, we're talking about the summation of L1 plus lambda L2, and we understand that uh, we have that form, and when we reach that the derivative, total derivative of h and dt, we call partial h by partial t, uh, plus partial h by partial x dx by dt, as we said, this term can be substituted with dh by dt only on one condition, if g over lambda equal to dx by dt. And also I'm gonna take this out with respect to this by taking by putting dv by dt on one condition, if lambda a square over g equal to dx by dt. So this the, the nice thing about the method characteristic that I took out the partial derivative, I put the total derivative, and also I have a condition of the g over lambda equal to dx by dt equal to lambda a squared over g. If I multiply the g, uh, the crossing multiplication here by lambda multiplying by lambda a squared equal to g squared and taking lambda from one side and the g over a on the other side and get the square root, it will be lambda equal to plus or minus g over a. Okay, if I substitute back the lambda to that by g over a, I put the plus or minus g over a, multiplying by d of h by dt, plus dv by dt, plus the term fv v over 2d, I did not touch that term. So this is the final conclusion of the method of characteristic. Saying what? Saying that there is two equation here. The first equation with plus sign, the second equation with minus sign, on one condition. If I take the first one with plus sign, it will be with dx by dt with plus a. If I take the minus sign, g a, g over a, dh by dt plus dv by dt plus fvv over 2d, it will be on condition of dx by dt, it will be equal to minus a. So this, this equation, as it become much easier than the first one, but it has some limitation. The limitation is that you cannot solve with that solution except that in the kind that you can choose, you have to choose that dx by dt has to plus equal to plus or minus a. Again, if I if I elaborate on that, this is the first equation with the condition. So this we call it a C plus. This is called a C plus equation. The, the first characteristic, the positive characteristic. And this is we call it the negative characteristic. We call it C minus. So if you find C plus or C minus in any Water Hammer book, you understand that this represents the equation of the positive characteristic equation on the condition that dx by dt it will be plus a. And when you see the word C minus, it means the negative characteristic equation, which is this one with the condition of dx by dt equal to minus a. Note, two new equations are function of t only. All these equations are function of, of time. They are characteristic form of the conservation equation. Why? Because we combine the continuity and the momentum together in a certain equation. So they are representing the conservation equations. They apply where they apply means it's valid, it's condition, when dx by dt equal plus a or minus a. This is the conclusion of, of that part. Now, somebody will ask, what I'm gonna do with this? Is this a solution? No, we need to, this is total derivative. Remember, this is total derivative. I need to use a finite difference technique to, to open these things and make it easy to solve. To do that, we have to have the different scheme. First, if you imagine that this line here as if it is a pipe, and this is the pipe is divided into section. This is section one, section two, three, four, five, and this is the last one, we call it N, section N. And the node, node each section has a node upstream and node downstream. So this is node number one, this is node number two, three, four, five, 
and this is it will be node number n and this is node number n plus one so at the end every pipe you will have n section and you have n plus one node again sure don't be lost why we are looking to those equation and we tr we we need to solve them we need to solve them as easy as we can so we need to do to do the different scheme here we choose a time interval delta t in such a way to to make the condition valid remember we said that this equation will be valid only if dx by dt equal to plus a or dx by dt equal to minus a correct so if I choose delta t in such a way that delta x over delta t equal to the a, so I confirm or I guarantee that this equation will be solved properly. Tamam? So now my selection to delta t here, it will be very crucial to my calculation because if I choose it with the choice with the selection of delta x again. So delta t and delta x together will make a combined things in such a way that delta x be equal to a delta t, which guarantee the condition. Again, I'm repeating myself, guarantee the condition of applying the characteristic equation. So we divide the pipe lens L. If it is a pipe lens L, we divide it into N section. So delta x equal to L over N. This is easy. The pipeline is divided into number of equal size segment. So first, equal size segment. Don't make things messy here. So it would be equal size segment in a series node point labeled as one, two, three, up to i, n, up to n plus one. So n is the number of segment or section. So establish a finite difference equation at all node. Every node here, I'm gonna establish equation to solve that point. An equation, remember, I don't have any other equation except those two equations here. This is a C plus and C minus. Delta X over delta T, I already made them here. I already made them delta X equal delta T, A delta T here. So establish the finite difference equation at all node point along both positive and negative characteristic. So now every one of us know knows now that I'm going to solve the positive characteristic and the negative characteristic on the condition that delta x over a delta x equal a delta t okay why I'm doing this I'm doing this to solve two unknown velocity and the head okay remember the only unknown here on this equation is H and V, H and V, okay? And I'm gonna solve this H and V for every delta T time step, in every step, starting from zero time. Remember, when I ask you to start from zero, T equals zero, T equals zero, it's a start. So I need to know that my start, so I can march those time. You remember march? Marsh means we're walking distance. Here we imagine that the pipeline is that white, that white diagram here I can consider as a pipeline. I'm gonna start by solving step by step, making a time zero, T1, T2, T3, and the only tool which I have, I only equation which I have, the C plus and C minus equation with the condition that my selection of the delta X and my calculation time step has to follow the wave speed A. So that's simple. Two equation following the X by DT, the savvy A, and we need to march with time by looking for all the other element. Characteristic diagram. Again, so if you don't understand what I have said in the previous slide, please concentrate with me. I have C plus and C minus. And I have I, I call this the node I location, I minus one, I plus one. And here, here the time frame, 
which is j location j plus one. The difference between j and j plus one is delta t. The difference between i and i plus one is delta x. So the slope of the positive characteristic is here and the slope of the negative characteristic is there. And this has to follow that delta x, delta x and delta t, if, if I divide delta x over delta t, they must be equal to a plus a. The slope of this line has to equal a, okay? So, meaning that I have to make my element or my segment or, or my, my section in such a way that delta x and my calculation of the delta t, delta x over delta t, it has to be equal to a, so that line will get into that corner and that line will get into that corner here. And we'll learn why I'm saying this now. So V and H, the two parameters which I need to calculate, they have lower index and upper index. What's a lower index? Lower index means location, means in the X direction. I am here at the I line. I have here, I am in the I minus one, I plus one. So this node, or this node, if it is, if I have velocity, for example, here, and the velocity at I, if it is velocity at I location, and J plus one means at J plus one time frame or time step. So here I'm saying that in the lower index indicate the location, on the upper index indicate the time step. So I have j plus one indicating the time step. So again, similarly, h i at location i and at the time step j plus one. So everyone of you knows what the meaning of what's the meaning of lower index and upper index. So i is a location, j plus one is a time step, and those are the two parameters which I need to calculate. In every time step, there are two unknowns, v and h. V and H. At each of the n plus one nodes, n plus one nodes, all the nodes here, I have two unknowns. To determine these two unknown, so I must have two multiplying by n plus one equations. Again, if I have n plus one nodes, means in every nodes, I have two unknowns, V and H, so it means that I need two multiplying by n plus one equation to solve that. Okay, otherwise I'm, I'm gonna, I will not solve it. For the quantity at time j, quantities at time j plus one are compute from, from quantity at j and j plus one to be are computed. The new time j plus one become all time. So for example, if I know, if I know the information at that level, if I know the information at that level, and I'm gonna compi compute at that level, okay? Imagine, imagine that I know how to compute at that level by knowing this node and this node and this node, all the information. I'm gonna learn how to calculate that from step J. So using the equation C plus and C minus, I'm gonna calculate the new V and H at the new level j plus one. I'm gonna repeat that for every node, every other node. After I calculate all the node at j plus one, it will be it will be considered for me the the j for the next step. It will be this will, will be again this picture will be remain the same. J here, it will be the j here and this is j plus one for the new step. Again, knowing knowing one line it will enable me to calculate the second line. Again, let me let me explain this. This is the diagram here. This is node. Imagine that this line represents the pipe. Okay, and this is the section x1, x2, i, i minus one, i, i plus one, all that section here. And this is a time frame here. And this is a c plus, and this is a c minus. I'm going to use all the information at t equals zero, for example. Let's imagine that the first line here represents t zero. t zero means what? t zero means 
the steady state condition. Imagine that I know everything here. Everything at V and H, I know them because I know how to calculate steady state condition, okay? So if I know all the information at time zero, and again, I have two equation here, one from there and one from there, C plus and C minus. And I know the I, uh, all the information about V and H here and V and H there. So using those two equations, I can calculate the V and H at that point. And I will let you know how to do that. Again, from this, this one and this one, I'm gonna calculate here. This one and this one, calculate here. This one and this one, I'm gonna calculate here and so on. So it will be marching with time to calculate all the interior point. For the known condition at time t, we can get the solution at t plus delta t. This is what we have said right now. Explicit in time. So only condition stable if delta t less than or equal delta x over a. This will be stable only if delta t, the selection of my delta t, is less than delta x less than or equal delta x over a. Remember, if the line of the c plus and c minus get into the corner exactly, it means that delta t equal to delta x over a. Remember, if this point and this point, the line of the c plus and the line of the c minus get exactly into the corner, it means that I succeeded in choosing the increment of delta x and the increment of delta t in such a way of delta x over, over delta t equal to a exactly, or delta t equal to delta x over a. Okay, simple equation, assume velocity and friction at time t apply throughout the interval. We'll learn about the friction later. I'm gonna pass this quickly, so I know that this is a little bit, this is called the Koran stability condition. All this, all this slide is talking about that you have to fulfill Koran condition to make your analysis proper, CN, must be less than or equal one. We are talking about A multiplying by delta T by delta X. This is exactly what we have said later, that delta X has to be equal or greater than A delta T. What if it, what if it will be less? What if delta X will be less than? Let's first, let's first co concentrate of greater than or equal. Equal means that the line will be on the corner. Okay, the line here will be on the corner. Here, delta x, this is a delta t. What about that delta x is greater than a delta t? If it is greater, it means the line will be, will not get into the corner. It will get into before the corner a little bit or before the corner of b, before a and b here. It means that there will be another problem for me here. And as, as I said, I'm not, I'm not going to elaborate in this. It will needs more interpolation, and it will if you if you don't do interpolation, this will make an, an error or attenuation error if it is uh, C n less than one. If it is C n greater than one, it will be numerical instability, and this is not allowed in our analysis. So again, C n it will be a multiplying by delta t divide by delta x less than or equal one. The optimum thing is to choose that a delta t ala delta x equal to one. This is the optimum, i.e. delta x equal to a delta t. This is an optimum. It means that you select delta x and delta t correctly, not correctly, in, in an easy way that the line will get into the corner of the grids. If you don't do that, another things has to be done, and this is beyond our course here. But I'm, I'm just put this for the sake of completeness to that, uh, uh, this slide here. Again, let's, let's go back to the equation. How are we gonna use a finite difference form here? This is a total derivative equation, and <clears throat> if I multiply this equation by delta t, so it will be delta H here and delta V and FVV over 2D multiplying by delta T. If I integrate between those two points here, the, along that line here, you will find HI J plus one, H, HI J plus one, which is this point, 
minus h i minus one j, which is this point, and again v i v i j plus one minus minus v i v i minus one uh, uh, j. Okay, so this is I I took out as if I'm talking for uh, at this equation in the C plus equation. I'm using the red point here and the red point there. I'm putting all the uh, uh, upper and lower uh, uh, name for each time step and put that in the proper form like this here. Again, this is the positive equation. If I look to the negative one, I'm gonna repeat that here and put that at this form while it's good. If I multiply by minus, it will gi give me this way. In this page, I will have this plus equation and this minus C minus equation. The problem is that if I look to those equation, I add them together. If you, if you add those together here, and if you subtract them, one time I'm gonna add and one time I'm gonna subtract. I'm gonna see that here. If adding the two equation, it will give me this form. It will, of course, will give me directly the h i j plus one. You can notice that the only parameter which has j plus one here is this part. Everything else has j. It means that j means the steps which you know all the information on it. So if you if you ha have for example, if I look to that one, this is the J here. If I understand or know all the property or all the unknown for the V and H here, if it is known to me, which we call it initial condition later, if I know V and H here, V and H here, V and H here, I'm gonna use them to calculate V at I at J plus one. This is the new unknown one. And this is the only unknown which I have here h i j plus one again if i have if i subtract those two equation which is this one and this one if i subtract them together i will have v i j plus one so at the end of this page i have the two unknown the head and the velocity at the new time step j plus one okay remember that I use the first approximation here on the friction factor. And this is what we call steady state friction factor. <laughs> it's it's not, not the, it's a linear approximation here. <clears throat> I'm gonna sh show you quickly another form, which is much easier. If you don't understand the, the two slide before or the three slide before, I'm gonna repeat these things quickly but in another letters, in another parameter, which is the discharge. Most of solution in term of pipeline discharge, which is Q equal to AV rather than velocity. So in the previous slide, I calculate H and V. Here, I'm gonna calculate H and Q. It's the same, same things, but it will be much easier to, to continue in, 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 in discussion. And this, I'm gonna follow Chaudhry book here. It, it will be easy to be followed because the, the program is written in that way and all the parameters you're gonna find it in Chaudhry chapter two and three here. So this is L1, and this is L2, this is the momentum, and this is the continuity, okay? Uh, so the method of characteristic Taking a linear combination of L1 and L2, I'm gonna add L1 multiplying lambda of L2 again to be having the same things. I'm gonna have this equation, which is similar to the equation which I got from the velocity. This is the two equation, posted on C plus and C minus, but putting that in the form of discharge and head. Again, this is the two characteristic equation in condition that dq by dt plus or minus ga over a dh by dt f over 2 da qq in condition of dx by dt b sub e plus or minus a. Here I'm gonna, instead of i and j, I'm gonna put a and b 
and P. So anytime you will find P means this is the new, the value at the new time step, which is unknown. Anytime you will find A and B here, it, will, it is the known value. So let's make it easy for, for us. So I'm going to integrate between A and P. A and P and between B and P for the C minus. So B and P here, A and P here. This is the term which I have QP minus QA, G over A, HP minus HA, R delta T, QA, QA equals zero. And when I integrate with respect to the C minus between B, point B and point P, I have the same form. Remember that, and I put R here, which is indicating the friction, darcy wise back friction factor divided by 2dA. So now I have two nice and simple equation, QP minus QA, QP minus QB. Again, this is what we call them C plus and C minus. What's the difference here? How, how we transfer this into equation? Remember, here I get QP and I put all the rest on the right side. I move all this to the right side. And QP here, I move all this to the right side. So I have QP equal to CP minus CA multiplied by HP and QP equal CN plus CA multiplied by HP. The beauty of this, we sum everything here, which is CP, CP here related toward positive. C positive here and CN related toward negative. But the capital P here is the point which we calculate around it. So here, the CP, which is all this parameter, which is known parameter to us, and CN, all parameter known to us. Now I have that simple equation, condition that CA equal GA over A, and that R equal F over 2GA. If I add, you see that two, point, two equation? If I add them together and divide them by two, it will give me the discharge. If I subtract them together, and I can calculate the HP. So QP and HP can be evaluated simply by adding those two equations and subtracting those two equations, similarly to what we have done with the H and V previously. Interior point. All what we have said right now is regarding the interior point, okay? All what we have said is regarding to interior point. So everything I can calculate here for all the points, knowing all initial point here, and then I can calculate the new one for the interior. So what about, what about initial? First, let's, two things we have, we have not talked about. Well, number one, initial condition. Number two, the boundary. What to do about the boundary? Remember? The boundary here, I, I have only one condition, C minus here, and the boundary there, I have C plus here. Remember, we said, we have said that we need to have two equation, C plus and C minus, to solve those two equations together to get the unknown of P and V. But what about the boundary condition? The boundary condition, I only have one line here, which is say C minus, and I only have one line here, which is C plus. I need to have another information here to solve for the two unknown, which is P and V, <clears throat> and the two unknown there, I need another equation to solve that. So at the boundary, we need another help, another equation to solve. In the interior, we have learned how to solve all the interior point, okay? But interior point without boundary, it's non nonsense. We need to solve everything together. <clears throat> 